Hello everybody, today we're going to go over a TIG torch assembly and disassembly with the correct components. In my hand is a torch body. You can see that the torch body is connected with this fitting to your lead which connects or sends gas and your electrical current through. This is known as the torch handle. Slide the handle up firmly for something to hold on to while you're welding. You'll see the torch head has two different angles. This side here will go towards your weldment. This side will hold the end cap. Proper way of holding a TIG torch is to loop your hand underneath and hold it like such. Remember, when you get into different angles or different circumstances, you may have to change your grip of the TIG torch. Some will be hold, held like this. Others will find their own way. Make sure you're comfortable when TIG welding. Other components are an end cap, a tungsten. You'll see that a tungsten has a color on the end of each one. That identifies what type of tungsten it is. In this case, it's Syria or gray. We have a collet. Each collet will have a stamped size on it. The stamped size must match your collet body and your tungsten. In this case, we are using a 332nds tungsten, so we need a 332nds collet. And we also need a 332nd collet body. Again, you will find this number stamped on the end of the collet body. This is your cone or your cup. Now to start assembling. We're going to start with the weld size of our side of our TIG torch. First we'll insert the collet body by screwing it into the torch head. Now remember these only they're brass fittings, so they only have to be hand tight. Our next step would be to slide the collet in the back side. Now this collet works by having a tapered end on it. So when the tungsten goes in the collet, it's going to be, you can see the piece sliced out. As we tighten up the end cap, this collet is going to squeeze the tungsten tight. So we can go ahead and insert both of these in the back side of our TIG torch. Our next step is to screw on our cup. Again, hand tight is plenty tight. Now you'll see that this tungsten can still slide back and forth. The end cap is the final piece of the puzzle. As we screw this in and it becomes tight, our tungsten is no longer going to be able to go back and forth. To move our tungsten up, we're going to simply open the end cap and slide this the distance required for welding. This should be two to three times the diameter of the tungsten that sticks out. That would be a correct setting. Tighten up our end cap. We are now ready to weld. Now, in case that you need to sharpen, which we do, as we begin to learn, we're going to dip our tungsten and contaminate the end of our tungsten. We do not have to disassemble everything in order to get our tungsten out to sharpen it. All you have to do is loosen the end cap, pull the tungsten out the front. Okay. When we get done sharpening our tungsten, we can simply slide it back in the front to the length we want, tighten our end cap, and begin welding. If you have any questions, remember, feel free to ask your instructors.